Now, as we head towards summer, the thought of barbecues and festive food and social events, it's a happy one for most, but for those with an eating disorder, it can be a highly anxious time. In Coffee Group this morning, we are joined by Kelly Lavender and Jess Park. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Really nice to have you here. Uh, Jess, let's start with you. As a former anorexia sufferer, why is summer so difficult? I think for two reasons, like I think around summer there's that whole thing of you have to have that perfect summer body and so I think a lot of people try and have that perfect summer body and try and conform to that and almost if you don't it sends that message that you're not good enough or you're not beautiful um, and I think there's a lot of anxiety just even around that sort of thought. Yeah. Um, but also just around I guess summer is that time where we celebrate, we get together with friends and family, we have lots of food and for someone who's going through anorexia it's so much easier to kind of stick to your routine by yourself and not be around people and kind of isolate yourself so suddenly you're in environments where there's lots of people lots of food and there's kind of that expectation to eat but it's not that easy um, and like I remember one time we had Christmas and it was kind of like there was that elephant in the room type of thing yeah. where it was like everyone knew what was going on but as much as I wanted to be normal I just couldn't it was that battle on the inside mm. um, which kind of created conflict and just yeah ended up in tears and it can be a real like, anxious time. Yeah, because so much is based around food, particularly on that Christmas mm, day. Definitely. And now, Kelly, how many people in New Zealand are struggling with anorexia? So we know from stats um, worldwide that the prevalence rates are very similar in New Zealand. We don't have exact st statistics. Mm. However, we know that it's about 0.5% of the population. And uh, as well as that, there's all so the other eating disorders. So about 2% of people in the population have bulimia, up between 2 and 3% with binge eating disorder, and between 2 and 4% possibly with a diagnosis called ARFID. Um, so that's called Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. Um, so a relatively new diagnosis, and usually affects younger children. Mm -hmm. So it's roughly about 10% of the population suffering from an eating disorder and that's a diagnosable eating disorder. I would suggest that there's a huge population of people with disordered mm. eating, body image concerns, and just mm. generally those issues affect them socially and their mental health. Right, who haven't actually gone to see someone to be diagnosed with it, but mm. definitely have some, some issues going on. Um, Jess, do you think that anorexia nervosa is sufficiently acknowledged as a mental health issue? It's definitely acknowledged as a mental health issue, but I think it's not probably acknowledged as serious. And so often it can actually get missed because it's that healthy eating or they're just going through a fad or mm. what they're doing is good. And a lot of parents can kind of miss it just because they think, you know, their daughter or someone is just, they're trying to look good or they're trying yeah. to feel good. And I think that is a part of the trick of anorexia too, mm. is you tell everyone you want to eat healthy, you just want to be healthy, but you are going down into this dark spiral, which could ultimately take your life. Mm. And I mean, it does have one of the highest mortality rates um, in the world for any psychiatric illness. So, so how are you now? I'm yes. fully free. So when, yeah. when you were in the, right in the darkest moments of mm -hmm. it, what did you look, when you, when you looked in the mirror, what did you actually see? So when I looked in my mirror, um, I'd see myself as fat, I'd see myself as ugly and not good enough. And I just, I hated myself and I just wanted to give up and give up on life and kind of saw no purpose in living anymore. That's mm. terrifying. Yeah, it was. Um, now Kelly, you held an event recently to get the issue into the spotlight, didn't you? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it was great. We held it um, on Tuesday the 30th. It's our Hope Night. It was inspired by Jess. Um, we held it last year and it was such a success that we did it again. So the purpose of the evening really was to advocate that recovery is possible mm -hmm. mm. Um, and to hear stories of people who have been through it, their lived experience. We had um, people who had suffered from all kinds of eating disorders. We had parents talking about their experience. Mm. Um, I think it's really powerful to have people's stories and to share for those people in the midst of recovery that even though it feels hopeless, actually it can shift and change. You can actually recover. Yes. So Jess, what's your approach to food now? I mean, how did you, where, where did you reach that spot where you had to, you knew you had to do something to change it, otherwise you're going to go down a really dark path? Well, what happened for me was I, through anorexia, wanted to secretly exercise, so found my love for dancing and ended up in a dance crew. And on the day um, that I was meant to be hospitalised, we got wild carded through to nationals. 
and I, and I remember sitting in the doctor's office as she was kind of filling out all the forms for me to go to hospital and I remember thinking, I have a choice. I have a choice whether I'm going to go to hospital and kind of live that life. I'd lost everything anyway and have no friends or whether I'm actually going to choose to fight and actually begin fighting for my freedom, fighting for my dreams and actually live a life that I actually want. Mm. And so it was kind of that defining moment. I remember begging my doctor just to give me a second chance, but she did. She took a risk on me and through that Began, it wasn't easy, it was a battle. I'd cry if I had to eat, but it was, okay, every mouthful was like helping me. It's medicine for me to actually get better and recover, so. That's yeah. great. Now, Kelly, what can we do to help? I suppose there's a few things generally in terms of the festive season. Um, if you know somebody who does have an eating disorder, I think the way to support them is to ask them. Ask mm -hmm. them, what, how's, how are we gonna make this day good for you mm. and um, to also that might mean that actually be knowing that food is stressful for them they don't have that same sense of pleasure mm. that that comes with most of us mm. who celebrate matter of saying hey eat this you'll feel better it's yeah that's that. right so mm. just have some sensitivity and respect for what stage of recovery that person might be in um, and ask them what be helpful uh, generally I think in terms of um, eating disorders I think acknowledgement and recognition that it is a serious illness um, to get help as soon as someone's concerned or has the mm. slightest inkling and uh, really to dispel the myths uh, yeah. around eating disorders. There is a way out. Well, Kelly, Jess, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been really, really good, good chat. Now, if you or someone you know is struggling with anorexia or another eating disorder, you can reach out to the New Zealand Eating Disorder Clinic through their website.